I will call the virtual City of Milton Common Council meeting to order Tuesday, January 18th, 2022 at 6.04 p.m. And can I get appropriate meeting notice? Meeting notice was posted at Hometown Ace Hardware, Milton City Hall, and Milton Piggly Wiggly on Friday, January 14th. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Of the agenda. That second. was quick. Second. A motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? All right. We have an agenda. Bill, Pledge must, of be allegiance. Bill must be concerned about my reputation all of a sudden. He really wants to move this along. <laughs> they're just trying to make liars out of me. That's all they're doing. <laughs> um, Pledge of Allegiance. You can see the flag um, over Inga's shoulder. So I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag. to the flag of the United States of America, of America. And, and to the republic, the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice, for, justice all. for all. All right. Good job, everybody. Public comments regarding items which can be affected by council agenda. Inga? There isn't anyone in the waiting room right now. So if anyone from the public would like to speak, you just have to unmute. All right. Otherwise we can just wait till your agenda item comes up. Mayoral proclamation for blood donor month. And as you know, we are in a bit of a crisis right now. Uh, and we're running short on blood everywhere. So this is a very timely proclamation. Um, whereas more than 50 years ago, on December 31st, 1969, the president of the United States signed a proclamation designating January as National Blood Donor Month. And whereas the new monthly observance was meant to honor voluntary blood donors and to encourage more people to give blood at a time when more blood is needed, and whereas one in seven patients entering a hospital need blood, and whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has put additional pressure on the blood supply, we are encouraging blood donors to make and keep appointments to donate blood now and during the months to come. And now therefore I, Anissa Welch, mayor of the city of Milton, do hereby proclaim January, 2022 as blood donor month in the city of Milton. Further, the Common Council encourages Milton's community members to make and keep appointments for blood drives occurring in the region. And I will sign that January 18th, 2022. Approval of a minute of minutes for January 4th, 2022. Moved. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Are there any additions or deletions or corrections? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? All right, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a TIF development agreement with IHT Investments, LLC. So this is actually an amendment to the existing TIF development agreement um, with IHT Investments, LLC. Uh, we entered into a TIF development agreement with IHT Investments LLC, which is commonly referred to as Carl's Place here in town. And Carl Markstead, who is the owner and operator of that uh, facility, is on the call tonight. Um, due to the supply chain issues that are kind of, you know, gripping the globe right now, uh, his project started off very well and went very fast early on in 2021. But uh, due to those uh, supply chain issues has come to a, a slower pace than what was originally hoped. Uh, and we've seen this all through all sectors uh, throughout our, our uh, economy. Uh, and due to that, he was unable to meet the December 31st, 2021 deadline for completion. Uh, Carl and I spoke uh, in, in late 2021 and early 2022 about an extension of his TIF development agreement. And uh, we have prepared the amendment that would, uh, that would uh, make that uh, extension to December 31st, 2022 available to him. There are no financial implications to ourselves or the developer in this instance. It simply just moves the timeline for uh, the TIF development agreement by one year. 
we saw this uh, similar occurrence with uh, Mitchell House and uh, with um, uh, Bob Rippenberger's projects last year. So again, not immune to these issues, uh, but uh, certainly believe, Carl believes, and he can speak to it if, if necessary, this project will be completed in 2022. Um, however, we just talked about 60 hours of below zero, so that's not gonna help, but you know, that's uh, once you get the building enclosed, you can work in, in even the coldest weather. So we would certainly be in support of this TIF development agreement amendment. Uh, for IHT investments uh, that would shift the completion date to December 31st of 2022. <clears throat> well, any questions or comments? Brian? No questions or comments. Teresa? No questions, comments. Larry? No comments, no concerns. Thank you. Devin? No questions. Linda? No questions. Sorry that you have to go through this. Yeah. Is there a yeah. motion? <laughs> I'll make, I'll make a, a motion. motion to... Okay, go the ahead. whole council's making a motion. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the TIF development agreement uh, with, H, with IHT investments. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a work order from Baxter and Woodman to perform design services for the replacement of water main along West Madison Avenue. Is Mark taking this? Yeah. So uh, this is, as indicated, a work order for design for Waterman uh, work along Madison Avenue in front of Quick Trip. Um, this section of Maine is where there was a Waterman break here recently, and there's been several um, now that have occurred. It's a pretty short stretch, but based on the condition of the Maine, we would just want to get in the fact that it's on such a busy route, just want to try to plan ahead and make a, a little bit larger repair in the area where we've had problems and hopefully prevent uh, future issues. Uh, the work order is an amount of uh, 13900 not to exceed. Uh, it'll be billed on <clears throat> actual work time performed. Um, and the uh, survey work will be a little bit, uh, the limits will be a little bit more than what is needed for the water main specifically in the event that, uh, you know, if there's some funding potentially available later in the year or uh, decisions made to possibly do some pavement improvements um, along this route, uh, we would be able to do that as well. And to that point, I think everybody who lives in Milton is pretty aware how, how poor of a condition that section of road is. It's probably one of the worst streets in Milton. It is one of the more challenging segments as it is, is not technically our responsibility to maintain it because it is a state highway. However, um, you know, if we, if we wait for the state to make those repairs, we might be driving on gravel at some point. So Mark and I discussed this, we have this unique opportunity, uh, which, you know, I, I say unique as if it's a positive thing. We've had several water main breaks in this area. Um, and anytime we go to look at replacing underground utilities that are under a street, we evaluate the condition of the street above that. And sometimes are able to kind of kill two birds with one stone. Uh, so uh, Mark and I discussed the, uh, you know, the possibility of expanding the scope of the survey work in the event that we're able to do some pavement repairs that extend beyond the boundaries of the water main replacement. Um, uh, you know, it, it is a costly repair in order to repave that street. We know that, that it's probably going to be, you know, $300,000 just to do a mill and overlay. Uh, but if we have water main work underneath there, it would make sense to, you know, not just patch a, 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 you know, a 40 by 40 section and look at a larger section of it. Um, this street is particularly challenging and sorry, Mark, to kind of go on yours, but uh, again, it is a state highway, so it's under the state's jurisdiction. They certainly will let us make repairs to their street, uh, but, it, you know, it's unfortunate that, um, it, you know, we're kind of put in that position in order to basically repave a state highway. Uh, but underneath the asphalt that is out there is concrete. And that's what causes 
the you know that thump the thump the thump the thump as you drive into town and by my house and uh you know as you turn the corner and start to head down that road um there's concrete underneath that that asphalt to do it perfectly we would take the asphalt off and reconcrete it but now we're looking at probably a million dollar project um so We've gotten 40 years out of the asphalt that's there right now. So if we're able to get another 40 out of it, then maybe we, you know, maybe we win and uh, the rest of us can go on our way. And 40 years from now, somebody will say, why did those, you know, idiots back in 2022 just to put pavement over the top? But, you know, <laughs> our kids can tell us about that, I guess. But so that's the reason for the ex expanded ex scope of it. And, um, and, you know, wanted to make people aware that we're looking at a kind of a potentially a long-term solution. If we ever get word from the feds, what's actually in the Rebuild America plan, perhaps there will be some funding there that could assist us in that, or the state to partner with us. Or if we look at residual funds, potentially from 2021 or any other uh, you know, funding source that may become available, we may look to tackle a larger project in concert with this in order to realize economies of scale. <clears throat> Any questions? Linda. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, Mark, it, with regards to the PACER system, uh, I know that, that we have a schedule for our road um, as in maintaining our good PACER ratings. And I'm thinking that the state probably does too. By us doing this, does this prolong them from actually taking care of the road the way that it needs to be because the pacer rating might be better? Um, so this or just slightly better because of the pay because of the blacktop. Um, this is a connecting highway, so we we do have to do some minimal maintenance. But like Elsa, we wouldn't replace all of the concrete pavement structure. Um, as far as the state, you know, I don't know what their schedule looks like. I know a few years back we did reach out to the state uh, and we didn't get anything, no, not even a response as to what their schedule looks like for this road. Um, as part of this, you know, we certainly <clears throat> will likely do that again, but I would say um, any anything from the state is probably you know, if, if we were to receive word that this project was coming, it's probably at a minimum five or six years from when we were to receive notice from the state that this project would take place. So, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what the state schedule is. I don't know, you know, where it falls in their priority list. And we did, we did try to find out a while back and, and didn't get much of a response. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Comments? Bill? No questions, no comments. Ryan? No questions or comments. Larry? Well, I, I appreciate your reaching out to the state again because you never know. And the other thing is, it might not hurt to talk to our local representative, um, Mr. Verink, and others to see what kind of um, you know, help they can provide. Because it seems like I've read that when cities and communities ask the state to help out, sometimes they have a little more incentive than when they have to foot the entire bill themselves. So, I mean, they might be able to help a little bit. I don't know, but I appreciate your efforts. So thank you. Yep, we, 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 we can do that as part of this project. Teresa? Uh, no questions, thank you. Is there a motion? I'll make Larry? a motion. Oh, okay, cool. Linda, Larry's going to make the motion. Oh, well, either way. Okay. Right. That's fine. Uh, I make a motion to approve the work order uh, with Baxter and Woodland not to exceed um, the amount stated. And I guess and that's it, right? Is that correct? Is that enough? Um, mark or Mark? Is it? Or not? To approve the work order from Baxter and Woodman. Yeah. Not to exceed that amount. So, is there a second? 13.9. 13, yeah. I'll second. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding resolution 2022-02, resolution authorizing public works director to apply for grants. So this is a, a resolution for the DNR. Um, there is currently a resolution on file with the DNR, but it lists Howard Robinson. Uh, the DNR recommends these resolutions be prepared with a department uh, or position name rather than an individual person's name. So uh, we had to update it from Howard anyway, and we'll go, um, it'll now say uh, public works director rather than a person um, as the DNR recommends. So. Bill, any questions? Brian? No questions or comments. Teresa? No questions. Larry? No questions. Devin? No questions. Linda? No questions. Okay, is there a motion? I'll make the motion to approve resolution 2022-02, authorizing public works director to apply for grants. Second? I mean, I'm not seconding it. Bill seconding it. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding resolution 2022-3, establishing fee for outdoor display of merchandise and review of draft license application. So as you may recall, last fall, we had a conversation regarding uh, uh, the display of outdoor merchandise for downtown businesses, specifically those related, those within the B3 zone district. We had some businesses that were wishing to display some merchandise for sale on the public sidewalk by ordinance that is not permissible in conversations with both the plan commission and the council. Uh, both entities agreed that uh, some uh, ordinance could be drafted to allow that with certain conditions. So that was prepared. Uh, the last piece of that equation was to establish a fee if there is to be one for this uh, annual approval. Uh, staff is recommending $10, uh, really just to kind of cover the cost of the, of the administration of it. And, uh, and then we've also included a sample example of the license that uh, individual property owners would, would uh, fill out in order to receive permission to do so. So again, this would only affect our downtown properties in the B3 zone district and really just kind of uh, make, it, make it okay for those who uh, have done it in the past and for those who wish to do it in the future. So really two pieces, uh, recommending approval of resolution 2023, which establishes a fee and then setting that fee uh, to the amount that uh, the council feels is appropriate. And, and we've suggested $10. Okay, is When would start? This year. Okay, so you would just send notice out and people would fill out a form and is there a deadline or is it just it's an annual process, and, and, and Jenny, if I misspeak, please jump in. But it would be it would be for an annual process. Uh, the issuance, uh, the license shall remain effect until June thirtieth of, of the following year. So it went into effect January first, but mm -hmm. with this year, um, we did talk about enforcement wise, we may be a little bit more understanding because of the fact of getting the information out. And Al Inga and I have talked about possibly doing a letter to all the businesses that in that area to let them know about any updating dates on facade grants and also this um, application. So they're aware that it is possible to do this for those businesses that may not know that it's an option. Got it. Anybody else have any questions or comments, Larry? Um, just uh, thank you for all your effort. I know I appreciate it when I look through the license and the application itself, you covered all the bases that we kind of talked about way back then. And I appreciate your thoroughness on that, on staff's part. So I think it's fine. Thank you. Teresa? No questions, looks good. Devin? No questions, everything looks great. Bill? Um, only comment is, you know, obviously this is not intended to be a revenue generator. Uh, just a reminder of what we talked about. Uh, really the idea was having a process 
so that there was an end, uh, that it wasn't just an open-ended, uh, you can do this. Uh, the idea is that uh, you know, if in fact there was um, a, a vendor that was uh, not following the rules that were established in terms of right of way and, and, and so on, um, there's a process through which uh, we can kind of review that and, and uh, have a conversation with a non-compliant vendor. Correct. Yep. And Ryan? Um, Bill hit right on the head there. So <laughs> otherwise I have no questions, comments. Linda? I think that everything looks good. Thank you for all of your work. And um, I don't have anything else really. Is there a motion? And this is how the council meeting slows down. Mm. Linda? Okay, I'll make a motion to, is this a three reading? No, this would be uh, just a resolution. So it'd be a motion to approve resolution okay. 2023 or 2022 three, establishing a fee for outdoor display of merchandise license in the amount of $10, unless there is uh, another recommendation from the council. All right. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. There's a motion and a second. Anything else for anyone? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? All right, that motion carries. All right, you guys, you're doing just great. Okay, committee reports. <laughs> I feel like we've had a lot of things happen since our last meeting. <laughs> I feel like a lifetime has gone by. Um, who wants to do a committee report first? Um, so Parks and Recreation Commission, they met last night. There wasn't a quorum, so there wasn't any official action taken. But one item just to get on your calendars is um, the Arbor Day celebration, which we're going to plan to have on April 30th. It's a Saturday, so we'll probably do some tree planting at... Um, we're looking at King Park and Crossridge Park. Those may change, but we'll let you know and then probably do a dog park cleanup in the afternoon. So mark your calendars. Dog preservation, we uh, discussed possible history festivals sometime in the future. And working on the very beginnings of that. And then yeah. His Historic Preservation Commission is also talking about an oral history project related to the oh, yeah. merger of Milton and Milton Junction. So trying to um, piece that together a little bit now with the um <clears throat> with the school district is that right is it with the school district potentially not with, we're, yeah, we're looking possibly. at maybe some community partners but nothing's been nailed down yet so still in the beginning stages of that well those okay. projects are early stage and are you meeting on um civil war living history days for this year I, uh, I am yes. That's not a historic preservation thing, but yeah, they're, they're okay. looking at having some water living history days again with Milton House. So okay. we've already started the planning of that, and don't want to say the date just yet. I think we have one nailed down, but I think we were still double checking one thing. So, but it'll okay. be in May, roughly the same time as usual. Okay. So, have some a lot of uh, some new fun things planned too. That's exciting. Any other committee reports? Um, Story Gardens also met. Ashley may talk about it with her her department report too, but we are planning to do a presentation to council at the next meeting, the February, is that February 1st? February 2nd? February 1st. February 1st. So we're planning to do a presentation to council about the progress of Story Gardens at the February 1st meeting. And just someone to remind me to talk about February 1st meeting before our meeting is over. Uh, anything else for committees? All right, let's let's go to staff reports. Um, Ashley. Um, well, like Inga mentioned, we'll be talking about Story Gardens in a couple of weeks. Um, we had some fun things happen in 2021, and we have some 
big plans for 2022 for Story Gardens. Um, Jamie and I did a video podcast wrapping up 2021 at the library. So we share some statistics and pictures and some fun from last year. So that's up on our YouTube channel if you want to watch that. Um, the Red Cross Youth Club is going to have a pop-up book sale the first weekend in February. So February 5th and 6th during library hours. So you can come buy some books, please buy some books. And um, the money will go towards the Red Cross Youth Club to use as a club or they'll donate it to the Red Cross. Um, I started booking for our food truck rallies. So mark your calendars for Sunday, May 1st and Sunday, August 28th. And then for the Drug-Free Community Grants Project Coordinator, we have four interviews lined up on Friday. That's it. Thanks. Jenny? So um, tomorrow night, Rock County Clerk Lisa Tolson is hosting the first in-person elections official workshop at the Milton City Hall, and we're hoping to have more in the future. This will be actually unique because we did invite other election officials um, from other communities for networking. And then I have confirmed that we will not need a primary, so the first election will be April 5th for this year. And then today I sent information out to Plan Commission and Council about a zoning and landing land use workshop uh, that's scheduled for February 28th from 6 to 8 p.m. and that'll be hosted in Janesville. So if you'd like to register for the event, just let me know and I will get you registered. That's it. And is that, um, is that free? No, there is a charge for that. It's a $20 fee. Okay. So we'll and just let me know if council members or other committee members want to go to that and we'll figure that fee out. <clears throat> okay. Kelsey? Working through year-end financial processes and um, the county still collecting the taxes for the first part through January 31st. Otherwise, no updates. Thank you, Kelsey. Inga, do you have anything else? Um, just one quick thing. I am working on getting back on a regular schedule for the We Are Milton podcast. So if you have any topic suggestions, let me know. We did one, posted one last week with Chief Marquardt about the Human Trafficking Prevention Month and the upcoming community panel, which I'll let him talk about. All right, perfect. Mark Langer, are you ready for the weather report? If you're not, then we can come back to you. I thought Al gave the weather report, no. <clears throat> no, no, um, Al didn't. And you cannot, you cannot rely on Al to give your weather report. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's gonna get real cold, but there's not a lot of snow in the forecast. So that's good. Chance on Saturday, uh, maybe a little bit more. Sunday night. I think we'll be good, hopefully, with the snow, but yeah, some real cold weather. Um, otherwise, uh, everything's uh, kind of going along for winter here. Uh, wrapped up, picking up Christmas trees, decorations are all pretty much down. Um, doing some maintenance type items that normally get done in the winter, pulling some of the picnic tables in, um, you know, miscellaneous tasks like that. Uh, getting ready for some of the work for spring here with some of the smaller bids we put out and different projects that'll go out uh, for work over the summer. So otherwise, nothing too exciting, which is good. Um, just to add on to Mark's report. So at Parks and Rec last night, they did talk about public work staff doing some cleanup work in the wooded areas on the northern end of Crossridge Park and then at King Park. So the intent is to clean up some of those areas, get some of the dead trees out, the stumps that have been there, and then in the spring, likely replant some additional trees in to cre recreate that barrier again, but just um, have it be a little bit more safe for people and a little bit more um, visually appealing. Mark, does that kind of cover that piece of it? Yeah, just clean okay. up some of the overgrowth or the under, you know, the, the scrubby brush that kind of starts to take over some of the wooded areas. And just get it yeah, cleaned up and make it looking nice. I think we did some similar things a few years ago at other parks too, so. Okay, Chief, Scott. 
Uh, as Inga mentioned, our human trafficking community panel is coming up this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in City Hall. We did briefly explore whether or not we could do a hybrid option so we could allow people to attend by video. Um, technologically with the people involved, that's just not going to be possible. So that is going to be an in-person event and hope to see some people there and looking forward to having a talk that night. The other thing I wanted to mention is I found out today that Dave Schumacher has submitted his resignation from the police commission. Dave um, has been a fixture in city government for a very long time and we'll have to do a little research for all of the involvements he's had, but it'd be nice to do some recognition for him. And uh, we really thank him on my, for, on the behalf of the police department, all the work that he's done since I've been here. And he's been a, been a great asset to us on the commission. Is that effective in April or is he leaving before April? It's effective today. It was effective today, okay. Oh, all right. So we'll be looking for someone for police commission. That's correct. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Chief Pickering. <laughs> I just want to introduce all of you to Chief Randy Pickering. I don't know where he is on your screen. Um, he is the uh, fire chief from Edgerton Fire Protection District. <laughs> and um, he's gonna be uh, joining us and it's, we really appreciate that. Um, I'll, if he has anything to say, I'll let him say and then you know, in my update, we can talk a little bit more. I, I, other than it, it's something that I've done with all of our current Edgerton municipalities through the years. Um, and I've talked with um, Chief Parker um, I'm going to kind of brief Jeremy on the kinds of things that we share on a regular basis with all of our municipalities and kind of help him uh, maybe get into a rhythm of, of sharing that with all of you uh, during 2022. So you got kind of a flavor as to, you know, how the year is going and that kind of thing. But given some of the longer term discussions that are going on, I've started a uh, week and I'll try to join you um, as often as I can. Your first meeting of the month conflicts with a, with a different municipality, so I can't do it the first. I'll try to join you on your third week of the month um, and just warn you in advance, I'm going to be in Key West next month, so I'll be back in March. <laughs> a whole month? You're going the whole month? He's froze. No, no, just a week. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, no, just, just, just one week, just one week. Okay, okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. And we look forward to you joining us. Al, is it you? Is it you and me? Yeah, I guess I'm the last one. Yeah. Um, thanks, Randy, for the update. Glad to have you join us uh, periodically, even if it's, you know, you come back with a suntan and we're all still freezing. That's okay. Um, it's not okay, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, most of the most of the group provided great updates, Kelsey, you know, with the year end stuff that's going to be a big piece of the uh, city hall equation and certainly Jenny's going to be getting ready for uh, elections that are not far around the corner. <clears throat> and we do have a Mac is working on scheduling a candidate forum in city hall. Um, I believe in, they had two dates picked out in February so we're working with them to get that finalized. Uh, and other than that it's fire department fire department fire department so. Uh, we have a meeting on Thursday afternoon with our consultant, Miller Communications, to start kind of talking about the process moving forward. Um, and uh, uh, that should be, uh, you know, really start to kind of codify where we're going to head. So, Yes. Okay. So my update. I don't know if you know or not, but there was a press conference. And I think that it went well overall. Uh, and I think the stories for the most part were done pretty well that were that were in the media. There was um, a couple of things that weren't as accurate as they could be in some articles, but we 
uh, the town chairs and myself and Teresa, who is the chair of the Joint Fire Board Commission, Joint Fire Commission, Milton Town of Milton, um, did a press conference. We did that to um, let everyone know that we had reached um, an intergovernmental agreement with the, the uh, other townships in the city of Milton and that we uh, created a petition to submit to the Edgerton Fire Protection District Board asking them if they would consider us joining their district. And after we had that uh, press conference on Monday, the chairs and, um, went to the Edgerton Fire Protection District Board and uh, that petition was submitted. And the board will review that and also staff from the Edgerton Fire Protection District will review that petition. And in the coming months, they will uh, come back with some recommendations. And Randy, Chief Pickering, just jump in at any time if I'm not quite describing it accurately. It's a, it's a well, new process for us on. all. I, and, and interestingly enough, it is a new process for them as well. They've been in existence, right, for 29 years. And there have been, you know, little sections of townships where somebody says, hey, you know, could you cover this extra square mile over here because it makes more sense. But certainly the size and magnitude of what has been brought forward, very, 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 very well thought out, but just the size and magnitude of it, this is as new for them as, as it is for you. Um, the only thing I can share with you or the only thing to offer right now, um, they are jumping on this. Uh, They're having their first meeting this Thursday night um, and I'm gonna take them through the petition and all the elements of the petitions and, and start to get their questions. So they're, they're gonna act on this pretty quickly. Uh, along those lines, um, there's a possibility of uh, purchasing two new ambulances. So we might be having a special meeting to discuss at least the, the second ambulance. And that would likely be next week that we would have that meeting probably on Tuesday. And we'll let you know about that. Um, we wanted to kind of talk through with Miller Communications a little bit about that and and then we'll bring it to all of you. And I know that's on the fire agenda for tomorrow night too. Okay. Um, let's see, Martin Luther King holiday yesterday, the school district had uh, had uh, created an opportunity for a day of service. And they had asked the city of Milton if there was anything that we had to offer for kids to do. So um, I shared with them that they could do, <laughs> Mark and Inga and Ryan, I love this, just a, a quick scan of our parks, um, look at if there's any equipment broke, if there's any um, vandalism, if there's any uh, writing or anything that needs to be fixed. And then they could write up recommendations or suggestions. So if I get those, I will forward them to you. Or if you get them, you know where they came from. So um, I thought that was a great idea for the school district to do that day of service. So we're really happy to partner with them. All right. So if you are on the Zoom meeting now, you are not allowed to leave. And we're going to do... Um, our team building exercise. And we are going to do, to do um, it's a little word game. It's a little word game. It's very popular. You may have heard it. It's called Wordle, Wordle, W-O-R-D-L-E. Anybody here playing Wordle? Just raise your hand if you're playing Wordle. Did you do today's Wordle? Inga? Inga did in today's five. Wordle. Yes, Chief 
Scott, no? Got it in five. You got it in five. Okay. So, um, so he can't play. He can give us hints though. He can give us hints. And so what Inga is going to do is she is going to share her screen. And then Inga, can you explain a little bit more in depth? Um, I've never played it with a group before, so this is a new experience. Um, I guess let's throw out a five letter word and then we'll put it in. And what we're trying to do is guess the word of the day. And we have five tries. And you can all unmute yourself and you can, first, you, first. did you already solve it, Al? No, I, I've never even played this game ever before. <laughs> so okay. first? First. That's the word I always use to start it off with. Oh, I always start with broad because it's weird and <laughs> grabs a couple of okay. weird letters. Ooh. So the R is the right letter, but it's in the wrong spot. The other words are not in the word at all. The other letters are not in the word. Oh, okay. Rerun. So that's not as good to use because you're using the one letter twice, but we will. Oh, I see. We will how, run with it. How would you know if you if it's in there twice or not? It it is possible to repeat letters in the word, <clears throat> and so it, if it's a repeated letter, then you might have a green and a yellow or two yellows if both letters appear. So, do you want me to hit enter? Or do you want to do something different? Does somebody else pick a word? I got the first one, so. Yeah, because we have another hour. We have another hour for console, so let's. <laughs> um. Taken. Taken? Okay, the R, there has to be an R in it, Linda. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I'm hungry. And there isn't a T. No, I, I know said there bacon. isn't a T. Just put taker. Oh, there's no T. Um, there's no T. Baker. Okay. Baker? Baker? Yes. That's right. a good one. Then you get a couple more different letters in there. Oh. So Ooh. none of those, the R is still in the wrong place. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Ashley, you look like you know a word. Are you trying to think of one? What about rumor? Ooh. Ooh. Is it OR? Oh, we're getting some more spots filled up here. Yeah, with yeah, that's right. Is it, okay. Yep. We're testing my spelling. Oh, now the, oh, okay. So the R still the wrong spot. <laughs> um, but this confirms there's only one R. Because yeah. right. one is yellow, one is gray. So the R is either a first or fourth letter, right? Well, just it's rumors going to be, are the R is going to be right here. Mm -hmm. It can't be in the fourth oh, section. No, you're right. Or it can be here. Okay. And the only vowel is O. Yeah, because, okay. But there could be multiple O's, but that's the only vowel. We don't have very many well, vowels maybe, in this word. Because really? A, A, E, and U, right? And I are not in it. Since mm hints -hmm. are allowed and a lot of you are new at this, I'll confirm there are no double letters in today's word. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you, thing. Chief. Okay. Um. I gotta say, five letter words are really hard for me to think of. Yeah. That's because you guys are so smart. You talk with big words. Realm, but you can't use that. The realm? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Abort? Hmm. There's no T. Or A. Ah, shoot. Or B. <laughs> yeah. Well, what if you just stick, put the letter R in one of the spots and the O in one of the spots up there? 
I don't think I can, like, just fill just... in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you also uh, notice on the keyboard down below, the dark gray letters are the ones you've already used but don't fit anywhere or aren't in, as part of the word. How about broad, B-R-O-A-D? There's no B. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about grown, like G-R-O-W-N? Oh, that's nice. Good. Okay, so the R and the W are in the right spots now. Or the R and the O R. I'm sorry, I can't talk today. Apparently, <laughs> and this is our last chance, right? Uh, no, you have two more. Oh, we have two more. Okay. Why did I think it was okay? Hmm. <laughs> what letters can we use? Oh, the ones in light gray. Yeah, and we can use the dark gray ones. It's just not beneficial because you know they're not in the word. Right, right. You're basically wasting a guess if you use the dark letters. Right. Because you're not going to win it in that guess. Is droll spelled D-R-O-L-L? Droll? But there isn't two, there isn't a double letter, right? Oh, there isn't a double letter. That's right. Chief said that. Um, well, it has to be P or D, right? Like P R or D R, because no other letter. Oh, what? What was that, Annette? Proxy. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, oh, going on. Yeah. 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 Well done. Damn, <laughs> hey, we did it in five minutes. Good if job. If I get hooked on this, you're in trouble, Anissa. Yeah, that's probably going to get downloaded tonight. Leslie plays it. Uh, She's telling me about it. So, and well, it's not an app. You just no, it's go. just a website. But you only it's get a one. You only get one to do a day. Oh, which is kind of frustrating because I want to practice more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah interesting hey scott how long did it take you to get it today time or guesses both time way too long and guesses in five guesses in five uh, all right good mm -hmm. job everyone so um what is next tuesday what what date is next tuesday it is the 25th. The 25th. So we might be having a special meeting on the 25th. Um, I am not going to be at the meeting on February 1st. So it will just be the wild, wild west, even more than usual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Ryan, if you're going to be around, you can share it. <laughs> and... Ryan does not need to come up with a team building exercise, but he does need to fill Devin in on the team building exercise that Devin will be doing. Um, at the first Devin, uh, you should look at, uh, watch our last meeting. That's your uh, heads up. <laughs> it's really easy. And I already did the what? first one. Linda. Mm -hmm. What time are you thinking that we'll be meeting next week? Yeah. I don't know. Why? The usual, I would say, unless people have can't come at six. Okay. On the 21st. Correct. That would, that would, I'm not saying Chief Pickering that you have to attend, but that would work within our time frame. Okay. All right. Great. No, it, it wouldn't be the 21st. The 21st is Friday. It would be the 25th. 25th. The 25th. 2-5. Two 2-5. Five. Two five. Yeah. I, I talked with um, the, the vendor involved and kind of gave him a little bit of a heads up and just made reference to the end of the month. And he didn't seem to react to that too badly. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, you guys, um, I want to thank our two uh, council candidates. 
Eric Stackman and Annette Smith for joining us tonight. And we anticipate that we will see them at every meeting going forward. <laughs> Probably, if nothing else, to do team building with you. That was All right. Is just, there a motion yeah. to adjourn? I, Eric was saying something. Oh, Eric, were you saying something? I'm sorry. It was just sarcasm. I said, I'm only going to tune in just for the team building at the end. <laughs> Brownie points. I'll take them. <laughs> I would move we adjourn. I'll second that. There's a that. motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night, all. Nobody's opposed. We're adjourned. Under an hour.